Well, as we've seen the last week uh, in particular, politicians are continuing to play politics with children's lives in the Northern Territory. And while they discuss the merits of hard data, children continue to suffer. And the fact is, governments have failed these kids, the most vulnerable, for decades. Joining me live now is former Northern Territory Attorney General and Child Protection Minister John Elfrink. John, thanks so much for your time. Joining us from Adelaide today. You're also a former police officer. Is the rates of abuse and neglect in the NT worse than everywhere else in your experience? Well, yes, and that's also supported by the last annual report from the Department of Children and Families, which on page 30 identifies that family, uh, domestic and sexual violence are the highest in the nation. What's the worst of it, John? Uh, from what you've well, seen in recent reports and also what you experienced as Minister, Attorney General and a police officer? Well, the worst of it, of course, is that <clears throat> we're dealing with a, uh, a generation which um, is essentially uh, abandoned by many of their parents uh, to walk the streets of the Northern Territory and those kids ultimately become very vulnerable through that process, uh, either at the hands of each other or at the hands of adults in, in some of these remote and regional communities. Uh, this has been an ongoing issue for a number of years, in fact, for as long as I've lived in the Northern Territory, and it has become more recently pronounced. Um, there is no doubt that uh, programs like the ABC's Australia's Shame, which was a, a, a hatchet job of the most man monumental level, um, led to a Royal Commission, which has made a whole bunch of recommendations. Uh, government then trots out those recommendations on the basis of some um, fairly optimistic uh, 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 evidence that it received, uh, and the situation grinds on. The difficulty is, is that uh, in your opening uh, line, you said that government had failed these kids, uh, but their parents have failed these yeah, kids. And unfortunately, right. we have had decades of policies, decades of policies where we have told uh, the parents of these children that they have to become increasingly mendicant uh, and dependent on the state. Uh, and the inference in that is that you're not good enough to be parents of, uh, on your own, and therefore they abandon that role of, of parenting. And unfortunately, that is all too manifest uh, in uh, in particularly at the Northern Territory, where you have such a high level of dependency. I found um, it, I you know, found it extraordinary, to John. To run a family yeah, is that's right. You're absolutely <clears throat> right. John, I found it extraordinary, though, uh, this week, where um, uh, Peter Dutton went to Alice Springs. He said he spoke to social workers um, and, and said that these stories are horrific uh, and abuse is rampant across the... Well, in Alice Springs in particular, um, and there's been a week of quibbling about the language that he used. What do you think of that? Oh, look, well, I, I'm frustrated. Um, when I was Minister, of course, we were also, as government, challenged by these uh, fundamental and substantial issues. Uh, we increase spending, but spend, increasing spending in, its, uh, in of itself is not an achievement. All that is is spending more money. Uh, and, of course, the more you spend, the more you discover because you get more boots on the ground mm. uh, and you start to see the depth of the problem. Um, throwing rocks at Peter Dutton or, uh, is, is pointless because it actually tries to obfuscate the real issue here, which is the vulnerability of these children. Um, unfortunately, in the Northern Territory uh, and in other places in Australia, but particularly pronounced in the Northern Territory, walls of protection have been built around Aboriginal people through systems of land ownership uh, or whatever the case may be. And those walls of protection have the uh, unintended consequence of also becoming walls uh, of a prison. Hmm. So these Aboriginal people are often caught in these policy structures. Uh, so you get things like um, the, uh, the Royal Commission into the Stolen Generations, the Bringing Them Home report saying, look, we have to have kinship care and those sorts of things yeah, okay. uh, developed. And so you get this policy shift towards kin kinship care, uh, which is occasionally at the expense of uh, the child being placed into care. So the cultural rights start to get ascendancy over the human rights, and that should mm. never be allowed to occur. Uh, when I was minister, we had to actually sack a staff member uh, who endorsed the marriage of an adult to a child because they were too um, blinded by the desire uh, to protect cultural rights yeah. uh, without focusing on the rights of the child. And that seems still to be happening, John. I mean, the central claim here that 
you know, politicians have quibbled over for a week, which absolutely does my head in, is that Aboriginal children are being taken from foster parents and returned to dysfunctional homes where they are at risk of abuse. I mean, did you ever see anything like that? Is that still happening? Um, <laughs> I, was, I was often criticised for my attitude in relation to this, uh, particularly when I gave evidence in front of the Royal Commission, uh, that I was highly critical of this notion uh, that above all else you should place uh, a child amongst their cultural um, their, their cultural peers. Now, that's a preferred position, and I'm not necessarily against that, but the preferred position shouldn't... or the, the idea that cultural heritage is the only driver is what I find objectionable. The, f the child should be safe in the first instance. The child should be provided with security, uh, have a roof over their head, a good meal in their stomach, uh, and then we can start to focus on things like cultural rights. But the human rights of, of safety and certainty uh, is what a child needs above all else. Uh, unfortunately, that's being lost. And it's become a fashion, certainly in the last 10 years, uh, to elevate cultural rights. If you look at the Northern Territory Government's current policy, they have a, a culturalist security policy attached to child protection, mm. um, which obviously says that cultural security is more important than necessarily the security of the children themselves. Yeah, and they've now, said that, haven't they, John? They said that with stated, the alcohol laws, inferred. that they, they didn't want to make them, them um, at all racist or towards one race. But the, the fact is that this is is happening in among Indigenous communi communities at, at a higher rate. I mean, there's been lots of calls. Royal Commission, uh, Snake want a, a new children's commissioner. If I could briefly ask you what you think needs to happen right now. Well, what needs to happen is that uh, we focus on the children, that we have an effective approach of uh, collecting those abandoned children and looking after them. Um, every time that I raise this issue, the first challenge that I'm, I'm confronted with is, oh, you're advocating for another stolen generation. We're not dealing with a stolen generation. We're dealing with an abandoned generation. And that's the challenge that faces government. So those kids need to be made secure. Um, those kids that are walking around Alice Springs, 10, 11, 12 years old at 3 o'clock in the morning, should be the subject of some sort of care order. And they're not, uh, because we are walking on eggshells around the cultural... Um, uh, sensitivities and the political argument that invariably follows. Um, a kid who is hungry, a kid who is tired at three o'clock in the morning or a kid who is petrol sniffing, uh, those challenges are much more important for that child's future than necessarily uh, ne what language they speak or alternatively uh, what cultural background they have. Well said, John. Thanks so much for your time this morning. Appreciate it. No worries, Lauren.